Good morning, I'm Kevin Price. Delighted to be with you. Going to spend some time talking to you about you and your business. By the way, do you want to kind of point you to priceofbusiness.com? Uh, I write a lot. I write usually at least one article a week uh, uh, in my syndicated column. I've gotten kind of kind of crazy lately. I uh, wrote again uh, last couple of days about the trumping of America. It's been featured now for the last couple of days uh, over at uh, Huffington Post Entertainment section. Uh, that's part of their, their, you know, they're making an editorial statement now on every single Donald Trump story, which just kind of shows you the complete lack of objectivity there at, at HuffPo, which, you know, I've enjoyed writing for for a long time, but still, they do some really quirky things. And of course, their overall editorial position is is difficult, but... Uh, nonetheless, you know what? I'm I'm grateful they gave me the platform, and and uh, uh, I think you'll enjoy the most recent article. No, I don't support Donald Trump, but I, I explain why Donald Trump is getting support, and uh, and it's not going to go away quickly. In fact, the more he is quote persecuted, the more his ratings are going to improve. He almost can't lose, and his critics can't win. And someone who's really politically and media savvy, uh, Felicia Cravens, she is here uh, on the phone. We're going to talk with, with her a little bit. And uh, she's with a, a website called Free Radical Network. Radicals, rather. Free Radicals Network. And uh, we're always delighted to have you on. How are you? You know, I've got to say, I really do think it's wonderful that you have the platform at HuffPo and that they have given you that opportunity. That is a key opportunity to reach people that... You know, people on the right don't necessarily get to talk to. It is a huge coup that you've got that. Thank and you. That you've done so well there. I'm really impressed with that. I appreciate that. You know, you you probably because you are more savvy uh, than than the vast majority of people out there wouldn't be surprised of how many times I get beat up by people on our side for that platform. You know, and that they is, automatically that is the thing that happens. I remember. Someone wrote something for BuzzFeed um, uh, that was on the right, and they got pummeled for writing at BuzzFeed. Meanwhile, they were reaching thousands upon thousands of people who had never heard of them before and had never been exposed to those ideas. We cut ourselves off to so many opportunities when we just get into our bubble media. And again, kudos to you for breaking through that and to busting that model completely and getting out there and reaching people that we otherwise don't have a chance to talk to. Yeah, I appreciate that because, in my opinion, when all I do is is write, you know, I write for uh, Renew America, which, according to the New York Times, is one of the 10 most influential conservative websites out there. Well, you know what? The thing about it, all I'm doing is preaching to the choir when I write at Renew America. And I write a column for that. My column goes there every week. Frankly, what ends up happening is that my HuffPo friends get a PG version of what I do at Renew America. <laughs> You know, and and then even with that, HuffPo only approves about ninety percent of them. But still, you know, and they're now getting to the point where they're they're turning they're turning mine out rather quickly. They're used to me, and uh, I get lots of traction. And and uh, my most recent story featured in the entertainment section, but nonetheless featured, so it's getting a lot of traction. But it, I, you know, I appreciate you saying that because. Um, you know, I was I was very grateful when I was approached about doing it, and uh, they've been incredibly wonderful to work for, and they never edit my work. Uh, I've had to learn to edit it to make it acceptable to them, but nonetheless, they've never taken any license with my work, and uh, it's been a it's been a, a grateful experience. And our side needs to get out of the ghetto mentality. I think we got a ghetto well, mentality when all we do is is share our our ideas among ourselves. Well, there's there's a certain place for that. There's a certain uh, strength in that. And, you know, getting your your plans, your battle plans together, talking through serious issues, and figuring out the best way to talk about them or to sell them or to reach other people. There's there's room for internal memos, and the right has a desperate need of that for coordination. But the problem is, numerically, there's not going to be anything that they're going to be able to implement from the right unless they are gathering people who they don't normally talk to. And as, yep. as you were saying, getting pummeled by that, it's short-sightedness on our part when, when we look at it that way. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, no question about it. And so I'm, I'm grateful for it. And I agree with you. We need to do both. 
But we need to do is both. We need to be uh, obviously supporting one another with encouraging messages and ideas, but we need to also uh, preach to those who would never otherwise hear what we have to share. So uh, I appreciate that. Let's talk a little bit about what you've been uh, focusing on lately. I know you've been very interested in, I thought, an incredibly courageous stand that was taken by Ted Cruz. Uh, I mean, he literally threw himself underneath the bus driven by Mitch McConnell. He's already being punished for it. And uh, he was uh, been taken out of discussions as a member of the Foreign Relations Committee uh, uh, to talk about legislation. So he's being punished, similar to the way uh, House Republicans are being punished. But props to him for calling the leader of his party a liar, because you know what? He is a liar. And there are all, it really is a parliament of whores, just like P.J. O'Rourke wrote two decades ago. They're just, <laughs> they're just more proficient at it, at it now. I have that book on the bookshelf behind me right now. I'm looking at it. Yes. Um, and, you know, I love Ted Cruz. I love Ted Cruz in the way that he stands up and says things that people in Washington don't say. And he criticizes the team where, they're, where he believes they're wrong and lets people know that. It is, it is kind of refreshing, and a lot of us look at that and go, why is it Washington like this? And, and it's great to have a bomb thrower in, in the middle of all that who's going to keep some of the more traditional go-along, get-along habits from, from perpetuating. I yeah. love that. And, and yeah, it's a great thing that he's drawing attention to issues that we otherwise wouldn't know about. Um, my one concern is that if you go after the king, you have to kill the king. And so <laughs> if there is some kind of leadership challenge that develops out of this, um, I want it to be a successful one, and that's going to take a lot of people backing Cruz up, backing Lee up, backing uh, Rand Paul and the things that he's doing up. I don't know that enough of us are paying attention or uh, are down in the weeds enough to do that yet. I'm hoping that there's more of that coming later this year and that we have those things this year rather than these kind of distractions next year during the primaries. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Lamar Alexander, Mitch McConnell, all these guys are the usual suspects. You know who's been surprisingly quiet is John Cornyn. I guess. Yes. It's like he almost doesn't exist anymore because Cruz is eating up all the oxygen. It's, it's kind of funny. Texas has one senator and one kind of guy present. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Kind of a shadow senator. <laughs> right. Talk about uh, talk about this. You know, uh, Congressman uh, Mark Meadows has just introduced a resolution. I don't know if you heard about this to remove mm-hmm. John Boehner as Speaker of the House. What do you think about that? Again, if you're going to go after the king, kill the king. Uh, there have been challenges. I think the benefit of this, I don't want people to get their hopes up that this is a challenge that is going to be successful if only we do X or if only we do Y. But I think that the idea of a no confidence sort of narrative that goes out now might have benefits down the road, but I don't want anybody to get the impression that John Boehner is going anywhere based on this sort of thing. Yep. Twenty it's only twenty five voted against him. Only twenty five when they had the opportunity to really do it. When I think he was most vulnerable. Virtually every Tea Party candidate since two thousand and ten have been elected on a platform of not only taking on the Democrats, but taking on the GOP establishment and they could only muster up twenty five votes. I think it's well, just unconscionable. That was, really, uh, that was a campaign that was last minute. It wasn't well organized, it wasn't well funded, it wasn't well thought out. So I, I'm not going to fault those guys that, you know, and say, oh, they didn't do it, or the people that didn't vote against him for not paying attention to their interests. But, you know, get behind a serious effort. It's, it's easy to blow off something that just sprung up when they had, you know, a few weeks to do it in. A, a serious effort. But they should have had all the time now. in the world. That's part of the problem. Felicia, they they knew for months that the, that that uh, that was should have been a priority. You know, as they were running for re-election, and most of those seats they knew they were going to win in October, they should have already been st- strategizing that coup. It shouldn't have been unorganized. That's part of the problem. It should Absolutely. not have been. It should not have been unorganized. That's the problem. Yeah. Oh man, the drum. I keep beating it. I keep beating it. Call your congressman. I've already contacted Ted Poe. 
I contacted Ted Poe this morning. I said, I'd like to know, and my listeners are going to want to know, where you're going to stand on this. I'm waiting to hear back from, from uh, him. Ted Poe, longtime friend of the show, but frankly, he's gotten kind of soft for me. <laughs> well, you know, in the face of so many things where Republicans are outmaneuvered and, and out, uh, outsought and outpublicized, in, in, it's, it's, it's easy to be frustrated. It's easy to say, hey, I don't know that I have any confidence in these guys because they don't look like they're fighting. Yeah. And, eh, you know, what does that mean? I don't know. Congress has done a pretty good job of saying no for the past couple of years, but even now, even in power, even with the Senate changing hands, it's still difficult. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah, t- I think Ted Cruz nailed it when he said, you know what? The American people have gotten exactly what they had before, and no wonder why they're angry, which is explains to te- t- the um, Donald Trump phenomenon. Again, if you go to priceofbusiness.com, you can see my most recent article there uh, by clicking the Huffington Post link. It's a phenomenon that's is resting in anger, and the angry is anger is only going to grow. Hey, uh, real quickly, Felicia, how do people learn more about you? FreeRadicalNetwork.com and uh, all over Twitter and Facebook and all that great stuff. Had a real good piece not too long ago over at LibertyJuice.com about a great selling site. your candidate. It was a really good, well-received piece. Liberty Juice is awesome. Congratulations. All right. When we come back, we're going to have much more for you. As always, love having Felicia on the program. You're listening to The Price of Business. 